pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The pledge of the Christian flag. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior. have the Bible here in the middle. Amen. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp under my feet and a light to my path. I will hide the words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. You may be seated. There's a man who lives beside me, fought in World War II. He proudly waves old glory from high upon this roof. He starts out every morning like it's Independence Day. I've seen him at attention, salute the flag and say I love you.
while the choir's going down, and he's still playing that music a little bit there. In case you're visiting this morning, you'll find out this church loves America. You'll find out that our pastor loves the veterans. You'll find out that our pastor has compassion for each and every soul in this church and about this town and about this community. There's a love here like I've never felt before. And I'm so thankful that God, number one, has made me an American. Number two, he's put me here in this town. He put me here in this church with a pastor that loves me. I love my family. But most of all, for a Savior that died on the cross of Calvary for me, that that freedom right there will never, ever be compared to any other freedom. The freedom of the consequences of sin. The freedom that I know that I'm going to heaven one day. The freedom to know that the devil has no control over me today. Amen. So my challenge to you this morning is this. If the devil still got a hold on you, why don't you just get free from that this morning. Amen. Get free from that this morning. Let God take control of your life today. Amen. got a uh, head cold and I know it's all in my head but uh, seriously I'm good to go I, I noticed that the medicine that I take I always tell y'all that Mucinex in the blue bottle I call it Benny in the bottle it's like Benny Hen boy it's good stuff and it, it take a little while but it'll work amen and so last night I'd taken my allergy med medicine I normally take and I was looking at that to see if it was like an interaction or something so I looked up what the names meant on there on the Benny in the bottle and that one word starts with a P, and it's about that long. And uh, I looked it up to see if it was interact with my Zyrtec and Sudafed pill that I take. And I got in there, and when I searched it, it pulled up, and it said Preparation H. And I thought, boy, I just, there is an interaction with that. So if my voice ain't just perfect and something's not right today, it's because I took a dose of Preparation H in a, in a bottle, amen, so y'all don't believe me, you go home and read your Mucinex down there, that big old long word, and it is one of the ingredients, it, it does stuff for the eyes and congestion and other uses, amen, yeah, amen, well I'm just, I, I think y'all need to know stuff like that, Jason didn't even know that probably, but see, now he does. Amen. So he knows me and Jason know most everything, but now, see, I knew that. I, where he was weak, I'm strong, and vice versa. So, amen. I seen a deal that was funny, though, and I don't, I, I went on Facebook, I don't know where I seen it at, and it, they was having a protest somewhere, and that's all they have anymore. And uh, they was protesting the baby deal, and it said, uh, it was called a My Choice, no, My Body, My Choice, uh, I'll call it protest, I don't know what they was calling it. But anyway, welcome when everybody come, but you had to have, Proof that you'd had the vaccination. <laughs> Get it straight again. My body, my choice, but you had to be vaccinated. That's the kind of people we're dealing with, man. They, they just contradict themselves. Amen. I'm glad I got a Bible that don't contradict itself. But Second Second Kings chapter six, verse one. Just excuse the snot this morning. It like look like a rodeo bull. It's all right. Second Kings chapter six, first verse. And the, <clears throat> and the sons of the prophets said. Until Elisha, behold now, and the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. I mean, too small. And let us go and pray unto the, unto, uh, thee unto Jordan, that take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place where we may dwell. And he answered, Come, go, or go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and they, when they came to, jo to Jordan, they cut down wood, but as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he knew he'd have to pay it back. Okay? It says, And the man, <clears throat> and the man God said, Where fell it? The man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore he uh, said, He, Take it up thee, and put out his hand and took it. I want to preach a message to you this morning simply entitled, Let's Get Back What We Had. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's get back what we had. Amen. I, I, I can't believe that I'd be preaching to the whole crowd this morning. Nobody's ever lost anything and, and just didn't care to get it back. 
So we need to, we need to have some want to about that. I, I'm, I, I've got to think about people that's lost things and they realize they lost it and they want it back and they start trying different things to get it back. And, and so I looked up one of the longest um, uh, baseball slumps ever. Uh, it says Oreos, Orioles, Chris Davis, Oreo cookies is what I'm thinking about. Somebody say amen. That's great God. They say blacks and whites can't get along. They need to talk to an Oreo because I like all of it. Amen. Oreos, uh, Chris Davis breaks an 0 for 54 slump with a two-run single. 0 for 54 slump. This is a professional baseball player. He gets paid millions. And he's 0 for 54 I mean, are you kidding me? So at some point, these, these guys that always say, I, I looked at different ones, and, and uh, even some of the greatest uh, have went through slumps before. And then all of a sudden, they start overthinking. And then they get up there and think, I can't hit it. Then they get up there and start changing their, their footwork and their, their, kind of their bat speed and all these things. They start going through their head. And don't you know somewhere in 0 for 54, what do you bat maybe four times in a baseball game? That's a lot of games to just swing at the air. I mean, he wasn't hurting his bat at all. And he's over 54. And I thought about it as Christians. You know, do we ever lose something? That, and I'm not talking about losing your salvation because you can't. But I'm talking about losing some of the spiritual gifts that God's given you. Now, have we ever been in a place where we lost something that we used to have for God and you don't have it no more? Yes, absolutely. Amen. And so I'm going to preach about it. And if you'll, if you'll hang out in this building a little while, you'll listen about it. Amen. And we'll just have church this morning. So, so I thought about that. Uh, you know, even a professional baseball player goes through slumps. Churches do too. But I thought about this axe head. And so I got me, a, I got some parts. And... Uh, Let's see. If I drop this, I'm going to have to take that club home with me. Because she's going to get me. So the axe head is an important part of an axe. This is really important, okay? This is important too. But this is real important also. Now, I'm going to try, I'm going to see where this goes. But let's say, let's say that this right here is you. This, just this, all right? Now, some of you are newborn Christians, and you didn't like this, all right? But this is us. This is, this is, you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and spirit, which are God's. That's us, okay? All right. The, I know some of y'all was nervous. Some of them thought, man, I guess somebody misses church too many times in a row. He just gets out there and beats a far out of you. If I ever backslide, you'll know it, man. I'll be walking around with one of these, just hammered down. The, but, but this right here is really just a piece of wood that really don't have no power and it don't have no results. Come on, I, I, it, you try to go split wood with that and see how that turns out for you. So, so this is, and, and let's look at this as God's spiritual gifts that he gives us. Everybody has got, if you're saved, you've got a spirit. God gave you something. God didn't save you just to entertain him. God didn't save you just to have somebody to pray to them when they need something. God didn't save you just to sit on a pew and bat your eyes like a frog in a hailstorm. God saved you and gave you something. Now, I know full good and well, amen, that, that God don't want just this, and He's got these, so you've got to put them together. And, 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 and when this is attached to this, which I'm not going to beat it down on there, but when that thing's, when you beat that down on there, and put it in a bucket of water, yeah. put your shims in that thing, and just pack her down in there. That thing, you're doing everything you can to keep that on there because you realize that's a very important part of this. But I'm going to tell you right now, listen, the, the most important part, I'm going to knock that off right now, ain't I? I knew I would. The most important part is the one swinging it. I believe that God is the final authority. He's the master that found out where the head was at. He's the master. He's the one is the power. Well, the one swing of the axe is the one that has the power. Listen, you, you don't have no power by yourself like this. But when you've got the one whose hands you're in, then that's the power. But without this on the end, the spiritual gifts, you don't got nothing. Well, I put that on there good, didn't I? Amen. Cut a hole in the carpet. No, I'm kidding. This is what we're going to preach about some this morning. You know, you can come in here and sit on a pew. And boy, look good. That's good. Oh yeah, we got we got some old ones and some young ones and new ones and everything. That looks pretty good, don't it? But if you leave our church without this, I promise you, you will not have no results. Now, 
this, say some preaching in this, but I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if I'm getting where I'm supposed to be. But see, God's the power, the one swinging it. And I got Bible for that too. So look in verse 1 again, verse 1 through 4, we see that all of a sudden he says, he says that this place is too small for us. So they said, let us go make a place there that we may dwell. And he said, I'll go. I will go. And so they went and cut down wood. That's one through four. That's the only way you can slice that thing. So I call that the labor. They, 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 you'd scare a man to death today if you gave him an axe. They wouldn't know what it was. Amen. They, they, look, they look at that thing like some people look at a stove today. You tell them to get ready for supper, they jump in the rigs. Amen. But this world, but, but listen, see, the, 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 and, and it's those trees that they was cutting to build the kingdom, to build their place, to build what? Listen, they, they's wood, they's, they's all, uh, sheet rock, they's every kind of piece of everything, metal and everything in this build, to build this building. And, and, but we're talking about, right, right now, we're talking about a spiritual kingdom. To build God's kingdom, it took a tree too. Because the Bible said, 1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. When he was hanging on the cross, the thief looked over and said, Remember me when thou comest thy kingdom. Amen. Hey, that, that cross built a kingdom. Amen. And it's called the kingdom of God. Amen. He died for our sins. Amen. I'm telling you, that old tree is what Jesus hang on and died for my sins. So this is a spiritual application today. And it will work if you'll just hang with me for just a minute. The Bible also said in Isaiah 10, 15, Shall the axe boast itself against him that, that uh, heweth with it therewith? Does an axe boast? Can this axe say, oh, look what I did? Nope. It and the handle, neither one can say, look what I did. Listen, my spiritual gifts and my body, what God's given me, I can't sit back and glory for what I've done. All I can do is give the glory to the one that was swinging it, amen. To the one, uh, amen, that knew where to swing it and kept swinging. And listen, instead of, instead of him giving up in Gethsemane, he said, I'll take that cup. I'll take that cup. And he died for our sins, amen. And now we receive power. You shall receive power if the Holy Ghost has come upon you, amen. Without the Holy Ghost, we don't have power. And we, do, we don't just need this. And we don't just need that handle. What we need is all of them together in God's hand. And then we can get some work done. But it's going to take labor, amen. An axe without power, amen. It's an axe that's hanging up in the shed somewhere. Listen, you cannot take a good old sharp axe. Boy, Mike Young's got a good sharp axe. You take a good axe and you take that thing put it in the shed. And it has no power. It's just like Christians today that won't come to church, that won't get in their Bible, that won't pray. Amen. It's just like an axe hanging up in a shed somewhere. I called Brother John because he got a little bit of everything. I said, you got an old axe? And he said, yeah, I got three or four around here, but I don't know where they're at. What's going to happen if he needs to cut a tree down or something like that? Or get in, get in a fight with an axe murderer. Amen. Amen. He said, I don't know where it's at. Listen, God is the power. And in His hands... It can get something done. Amen. But, but in, in verse 2, he said, every man, every man, every man. I don't think God saved anybody in this building and said, well, I, I, you really just need to sit back and watch everybody else chop wood. I, I don't think God ever did that. You say, well, I can't sing and I can't. You'll find something God lets you do and God will give you the power to do it. You can't tell me. They got hatchets, they got splitting mauls, they got axes. You can find a little bit of everything. You can find all kinds of different handles. You can find they all look different than everything else. But they got one purpose, and that's to chop wood. And I'll tell you, it's going to take some labor. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some dedication. These guys and gals that go to the jail and go to the rehabs and go all out in these places, thank God they do. Because, you know, we just want to just slam, put them in a the slammer and be done with them. But you know what? If they get in the right hands, amen, they might come out of there and do something for God, amen. Amen. Verse 2, every man, every man went out there and labored, amen, so they could move a location. We've been through that, haven't we? But verse 3 said, I'll go. Whom shall I send and who shall go for me? He, Isaiah said, send me. Send me, Lord. You know, how many people in here today, if God said, I need you to do something, would say, send me? Most people would say, well, uh... Uh, you'd hold your little handle up and say, I just don't feel like I'm equipped for this. On, God go, I've got something for the end of that thing, yeah. but you just don't want it. It's your problem. What's wrong with most people today is they don't want to be too spiritual. And I ain't talking about shouting. I ain't talking about all that stuff like that. I'm talking about doing something for God. 
and, and, and what's missing here is the part that's going to cut some wood. Yeah. And you take all the power in the world and that axe still can't brag and say, see what we did? Because that thing's laying right there and it's not doing anything until it's in the hands of the Master. Amen. Look at it. Sit there on the pew next to Sister Lisa. Amen. Right there. We, uh, that's the full meal deal. But oh, look at their spiritual gifts. They're not doing a, 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 not one thing. Now, there's some preaching down here I'm fixing to get to. I'm, just, I'm trying to uh, uh, just uh, uh, soften you up a little bit here before I get to the real stuff. Verse 4, it was work. It's work. It's work. Any man desireth the office of bishop, he desireth a good work. God said it's a work. God said it always will be a work. And it is a work. This is a work in Maple Springs. This is a work. These people drove for more than an hour away from here to be here today. These people all around this area from Independence County came to this church today. It's a work. It's a work. And I must ask Maple Springs Baptist Church, is, is these people visiting today, are they worth us working and saying we're going to labor and we're going to love them and we're going to care about them? Or are we just going to lay our axes down on these pews and say, oh, look at our nice building. Look what, look what we've done. The axe don't boast. Axe ain't going to boast. I tell you, you or this, either one, neither one ain't no boasting. I tell you, it's all about the one swinging it. Yeah. We, I, if we don't have the power of God, and, and that's, what, that's what bothers me, because when we start to lose a little bit of power, we're not swinging as much and ain't swinging near as hard. Yeah. And this world's getting darker, and the darker the, or darker the world gets, the brighter the church should shine. Yeah. You let it get real, real dark, it don't take much of a light to shine. Yeah. But the next thing I want you to know is first was the labor. It take labor. And they, they all volunteered and said, hey, we're in this thing. They didn't even have to vote on it. The next thing was the loss, though, in verse 5. Amen. The axe head fell into the water. He lost his axe head. Now, most people would take that as a God sent to say, well, I guess I'm supposed to just be lazy now because I don't got no axe head. Well, he lost his edge is what he did. You remember when you used to have an edge? Satan get after you and you had a little edge. You just prayed up and studied up. The devil didn't get nothing over on you because you had an edge. You've lost your edge is what happened. Some of you have lost your edge. I've lost my edge some. It happens to all of us. Uh, Adrian Rogers would tell you before he died, he would have said, there's been times in my ministry I've lost my edge. I don't have what I used to have. But buddy, I may go over 54, but I'm looking for the next hit. I may have some sermons that may just stink, amen. Y'all may not think it's very good. But you know what? Just hang around. I'm going to get that hit sooner or later. I keep thinking I'm going to keep chopping. I'm going to keep chopping, amen. But the loss, he said, I lost my edge. But the bad news is, the bad news about this whole setup with this axe and the handle, and the one hold it, the whole, whole bad thing about this is, that's kind of sad, is this head on this thing will come off. You know, it would be something if God just made it permanent where he gave us a gift and we could never set it down and leave it. Now, if God says that, that, that the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. I believe when God calls a preacher and he it enables him and puts that axe head on, listen, I know a lot of preachers got caught in adultery and all kinds of stuff and just lazy and this and that and they quit the ministry. Well, you know what? God never recognized it and God never said it's okay because the gifts and calling of God without repentance. In other words, God ain't going to say, well, that's okay. You know, God, God ain't going to forget it. And I'm telling you right now, the sad part is this head can come off. That one's on there, that one's on there good, but it can come off. And if what I'm saying is, you can come in here like this, without your axe head, without your power, without, I mean, without your spiritual gifts, what God's given you. And, and that's, that's, that's your opportunity. And I'll show you some things that will do it to you. Hey, hey, man, we need to get back what we lost. We need, we need to get back some things we used to have. You do, I do, this church does, and every person walked in here today is saved by the grace of God and say, you're either, either you're doing what God have you do or you're backslid, amen? It's just the way it rolls. But you know, it always starts to get loose first before it comes off. It's going to need some attention. You know, you tell when people start getting loose and they're living, they're about to quit church. Not everybody's quit church was loose and living. There's all the different reasons. But I've seen it happen. I've seen folks start to get loose in what they didn't used to be loose at. Next thing you know, they're out the door. See, when that thing starts to get loose, Brother Mike Young will tell you, and anybody, about everybody in here that's ever used axe tea or split maw or anything, when it starts to get loose, you can just keep, uh, I'm trying to think of a Greek word, uh, whopping it against the ground. Yeah. Whopping. Y'all got, yeah, everybody's whopping, okay. That, that head gets loose on them, you'll split for a while, 
chop for a while and it gets loose, brother buddy, and you just whop it against the ground, get her back down there and do it again, guess what's fixed to happen? It's going to get looser and looser until you do something about it, amen. You're going to put some more wedge in that thing and put it in a bucket of water, is what daddy always taught us, and swell that thing, and that's about the best you can do. I know they don't know that in New York City, but we know it. And they don't know what whopping is either, amen. We stopped one day over at, um, what's that um, concrete place called over? Don't... Yeah, it was the one out. It's got them concrete deals, specialty. Expensive ice cream. We were shooting the works that day, back when we had gas in the tank, amen. We, and we pulled in there, and uh, there's a guy, and obviously he had a little bit of a, a foreigner accent, and, and uh, he was uh, selling concrete, amen, ice cream. And uh, they had a Whopper. There's a Whopper. What? Whopper concrete. I like Whoppers. Can I get an amen from anybody? Amen. God help. I can't stop with one. You can eat that whole, it looks like a milk jug. Open it up and it's full of Whopper. Well, I tell them, I said, Sandy got what she did, you know, something with fruit and stuff. I go, hey, how about that Whopper special there, that Whopper concrete? And he goes, he looked at me and goes, Whopper? <laughs> Whopper. He had no idea in this world. And he's selling them, but he didn't know what a whopper. Whop, whopper, amen. And, I, and, and, and he got over by the whole deal with all the stuff. And he just go like this. And I go, oh, over to the left, over right there. And he gets them little and goes, whoppers. Whoppers, amen. So it's a whopper, amen. I didn't know anybody in the United States didn't know what a whopper was. God help us, we're in such a mess. I wouldn't hire a guy if he didn't know what a whopper was. All right, you whop it back on there. It starts to get loose. You know, has your joy ever just got loose? And you ever had a, have you ever had a problem having joy? Because you're going to hit something head on tomorrow. You're going you're to walk out of here and come back tonight. I mean, see, your attendance used to be, your attendance used to be solid. And now all of a sudden you may have lost a, you, you may be walking around like this. And you're not got the results you used to have because you don't got the power and you don't got the spiritual gills and you've, you've lost your attendance. You've lost your joy. Like I said, you're going to hit something tomorrow and try to take that joy away from you. You can't tell me uh, illness and sitting in the hospital for so long can't take it out of you. You can't tell me work can't take the joy out of you. You're spiritual. You ain't walking around with this at work. You're walking around that right there. You're not getting anything done for God. All you're doing is mad because of the idiot you got to work with. And I know what you want to do with this at work. Thank God you ain't got this at work. Amen. 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 Go postal with an axe handle. Amen. But, 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 but it takes your joy from you. you. You can't tell me what divorce does to a lot of people in our church. You see somebody go, they, 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 oh man, it's okay. And they quit church a little bit at a time. You can't tell me what family problems don't do to this church. I've seen just kids start getting out there acting like a devil. Next thing you know, you just sit there. Thank God you're here because this is where you're going to get the axe back and get it sharpened. Because you leave that thing sitting around long enough, it's going to get rusty. But your joy's gone. You're, you're, you don't sing anymore. You sit back there and act like, impress me if y'all can. We can't even get a full choir. It don't matter if we run four or five hundred. We can't get a full choir. We just want somebody else to do it for us. Bunch of axe handles sitting out there looking at some people that's got, some, got the full axe, amen, saying, listen, we want some results. Hey, if you'll read your Bible, they they get in there and they'd have some singing, amen, and have victory in some of the battles, amen. I, I don't care. Might as well say it, amen. I'm sure ain't going to run nobody else. The, the faith. What about your faith? Where's your faith at? Hey, how you doing? Great. How's things going? Oh, they really, it really stinks. Well, you've been, you've been praying and going to church and doing what? Well, no. Yeah, I can tell. You still splitting wood? Well, I'm just beating on it. I'm just, I'm just, uh, you know, I got, still got God. I'm still saved. But it's just like hitting a ball bat against a tree. It just don't seem like we ever get anywhere. Woo! Oh, yeah? Really? Yeah, we just, we just, yeah, you're taking your body. And you're beating a snot out of it. You're, you're beating a tar out of it. You're just beating and beating and beating. And you're not getting any results. It's because the axe is boasting itself. Amen. And saying, well, you know, I can do it. No, you can't do it. You need the one that's got a hold of it. That says, listen, let's get their spiritual gifts back. Let's get on for the glory of God. And let's get something done. How did he go to his disciples and say, how is it that you have 
No faith. There's that boat sucking her thumbs and biting her nails off and popping Xanax and everything to get their hands on. Said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Somebody finally went back there and woke up Jesus. How is it that you have no faith? You can say, well, you can't go. Yeah, you can. Amen. Now, so, so it just keeps going. So, you know, all, the, all these things. Uh, your study, your attendance. They, they, we got people who used to teach Sunday school. Now they don't hardly show up church hardly ever. So back then you taught them how they should be faithful. Now you're teaching them how you shouldn't be. You get up. You get up. I'll tell you what. If you ever want to preach, you better remember something. We don't forget what you say. Amen. Well, he got up there and preached and said we were to be faithful and he didn't show up half time. If you're going to get up and stand up in this church ever behind this and say that you were to be in church, you better be in church. Amen. Or you won't be here anymore. Right here. You can come sit out there, amen. Listen, somebody really will be here. Hey, man, Brother Kurt. Yeah, I know. You say, well, our visitors really needed something else. Well, yeah, yeah you're the one thinking that. What they need to know is in a church that's, that's got some results because God's doing something and because we got spiritual gifts that God's blessed us with and we're using them, amen. We, you ever lost your focus for God? You ever lost your witness? If anybody in here ever used to witness more than you do now, you're backslid. If your focus is not where it should be, your focus will be on something else. We're looking at something all the time. Other than we're sleeping. We're looking at something all the time. And our focus is either serving God or our focus is serving the world. One of the two. You can't love God and mammon, it won't work. You can't serve two masters. You'll love one, hate the other. I know, it's all Bible. But, but see, if you remember over in John, do you remember Thomas and John 20, 25? The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. They said to them, Except I see his hands and the prints of the nails and put my finger in the prints of the nails and thrust my hand inside, I will not believe. This is a guy that said, I'll die with you. Woo! I mean, shout it out for Jesus. He didn't miss a service with Jesus. He was there. He was faithful. Thomas was good. Thomas was, Thomas was sold out. He'd say, let's go chop some more. Let's go fight the devil. Let's go have a prayer group. Let's, go re- let's listen to the Lord preach to us. I love it all, man. And all of a sudden, one day, something happened. Eight days. Eight days he came back like this. And walked in and said, I won't even believe it's Jesus unless I can put my finger in the, in the nail prints and it thrust my hand in the side. I won't even believe it. You know what's wrong with most churches today, most Christians, even in this building right here? We don't got enough faith to, 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 to uh, uh, blow the fuzz off of a, a, a peach. Amen. Amen. Just like this right here. Hey, oh, oh, I don't want to offend anybody. What are you going to do? Send them to hell number two or hell number three? I don't want to push them back. Oh, I know. Yeah, you're so pushy about the Lord. And then you're the one that always compromises for everything they want to do. Right there is what you're trying to chop with. Well, we just can't get ahead. Yes, because you're beating and banging with a stick. Amen. Amen. It's like a chainsaw without a chain on that thing. You'll saw and gnaw and everything else. Won't get anything done. But then Jesus showed up and said, Hey, Thomas. He said, My Lord and my God. You know what we need today? Is a my Lord, my God moment. Amen. Where the whole church, everybody in there, is starting, old heart starts beating fast. All of a sudden, man, you're panting like a, a glade lizard, amen. And all of a sudden, you're sitting there and you just think, my Lord and my God. I'm telling you, when we meet Jesus Christ, I don't want to be surprised. I don't want to have to wonder where I'm at and who I'm before. I want to know and say, listen, if he walked in here today with the nail prints, and it don't say he's going to, but if he did, I think my reaction would be I'd fall down and say, my Lord and my God. I've not got to touch his body. I've not got to, you don't have to say, uh, I am that I am or nothing else. All he's got to do is be in my presence. But brother, I'm telling you right now, we've lost something. Every one of us has lost something. Amen. You know what happens? Like I said, it can be financial, it can be physical, it can be family, it can be just lazy. You won't cut no wood if you're just lazy. It can be burdens, it can be your focus, it can be your fellowship, it can be overuse for the wrong things. It may be wrong targets. You hit enough rocks, everything else, then you're dull and you ain't doing no good either. Amen. Guys, I'm telling you right now, listen, hey, the person in here is not sitting there thinking, you're right, Brother Kurt, I'm not where I used to be. But I'm fixing to show you something else here. All right? You'll never build a kingdom without your edge. You missing something? Let's get something back. Let's get back what we had right there. 
Woo, I'm thinking about it right now. I'm thinking, boy, I wish, I just wish I had back, back what I used to have. Wouldn't it change? Wouldn't it change your life and your family? You think it'd make a difference right now? We're fixing to baptize one, at least two or three tonight. I don't know. And uh, and uh, 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 that family right back there is so blessed because their little girl got saved this week. And, 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 and what a blessing, amen. And, and, and we don't ever need to let that stuff get old to us. But see, he called out for help. During his loss, he called out for help to get it back. Master! Master! You know, you, you ain't no sense in how you, you ask me to pray for you. ain't no sense in telling me I need my spiritual gifts back. Talk to God! He's the one gave us spiritual gifts. He's the one, amen, that said, you know what? Here you go. Listen to this. Number one, you'll always be the first to know. Nobody will have to tell you that you've lost this. In your heart, you know that you're backslid and you're not where you used to be. I mean, I, you, you say, used to, you'd knock somebody down and get the choir. Used to, you'd knock somebody down to teach a BBS class. Used to, you'd knock somebody down just to, just to give God your tithes and offerings. You'd knock people down to get somewhere close to the front. You'd knock people down to say, oh, I cherish what God's giving me in my spiritual gift. Oh, I just love the Lord. But you're missing this, ain't you? You'll be the first to know. But you know what? It won't be long before they'll be the second to know. But see, when Thomas, he knew he'd lost something, he said, my Lord, my God. Uh-oh, I've lost something. But see, everybody else is going to know too because there's no results. You'll, your face will drag the ground like dirty shoelaces. Oh, what's wrong with you? Oh, I'm just going through a tough time. Well, where's your edge at? Well, I know where it's at, but I just, yeah, I just don't want it back. I just, you don't want to put no effort into it. This guy did. Everybody's going to know. Next thing is, though, you may try to fool us, but you won't fool the one that's got the handle in his hand. You may, you, you, may, you may fool us a little bit, but you're not going to fool God. You also have to realize you lost it and admit that you've lost it. You'll never find it if you don't say, I used to be closer to God than I am now. We can't, we, we can't, you can't beg people. You can't go see them in the hospital enough. You can't send enough texts. You can, I mean, I, you could do anything you want to do. And, and, and you're not going to keep everybody in church. Amen. That's a shame. Right. And it's a power issue. It's a power. It's, it's a God power. And brother, if we put enough power in here, like I told Brother Shannon, he first come on with us, I said, we're going to make it as hard on them to quit as we can. We're going to love them. We're going to preach to them. We're going to, we're going to suffice them with the food, the spiritual food. We're going to love them. We're going to care about them. We're going to do all that. And when they quit, all they can do is say, it wasn't them. It was me. Be honest about it, amen. But here's the longing, and this is the part. This is the part really that we got to stir today. The longing. See, this guy had a longing from the very bottom of chapter verse number five. It says, "Alas, master, for it was borrowed." He wanted it back, and the man of God said, "The man of God said, where fell it?" And he showed him the place. See, he knew where he lost it at. You think that's the funny thing about it. you know exactly where you lost what you used to have. You know where you lost it at. You say, yeah, I used to be in church and now I'm not. Well, you lost it maybe right here. Come back and get it, amen. Get busy, get to work. Thank you, have a look at your Facebook whether you've been serving God or not. Oh, you put you a bunch of nice little scriptures and get you a t-shirt with a cross on it and a tattoo and all that stuff and be so spiritual and you can be the biggest fake axe that you've ever seen in your life. Boy, I tell you, that axe right there, you talking about a, a somebody that sure serves the Lord. They got you fooled. But there's something that you can't see. It's called spiritual gifts. That we know it ain't there. Everybody else knows it ain't there. God knows it ain't there. Because you can't get no results. You think you can build a church with this right here? Do you think in 18 years, that's all, all the only thing I can talk about is because I've only been here 18 years. In 18 years, this church is not where it's at today because of this right here. This don't build churches. This, 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 don't, this, this, don't, this don't spread the word. You know what does? That right there. But that right there has got to put itself in the hands of an almighty God. And God says, thank you. I can use you. He can't use you if you're like that. What person in here don't want to be used by God? If you're saved, you're, either you're saved or you're not. But you need to find out if you really want to serve God or not. I'm telling you right now, when, I'm, when, when God swings me, amen, I want the spiritual gifts that will dig in. Amen. Well, the longing, he longed for it, amen. See, uh, he wasn't happy watching everybody else chop. You know what? You, 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 know, you, you say, well, I'm, I really like this church and I'm glad it's here. What'd you put into it? 
I, I heard people when we first built that first new building. These people walked in there, I swear, wasn't there one day through every how many years it took to build it. And they walked in and said, yeah, we, we, we've, we've done it. And I thought, they must have a master pocket or something. We, we've done it. You know, I'd be ashamed to get before God without this. I'd be ashamed. To, I'm, I'm glad. It, it, it was hard on my family. It was hard on, on all of us. But it ain't like we, we, we don't even understand persecution according to the, 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 what most do. But me and my wife had to pick this up and say, God, where do you want us to go? He said, well, I'll take you and I'll go to chopping. But you know what I can't do? My wife knows this as much as anything about me. I can't stand watching somebody else chopping. I can't stand to sit around. I, I'm telling you, I've never been complacent or just, well, we're just okay, we're doing good, let's just keep what we got. That's not me. There's visitors here today that God can use. He'll use you when you get in this church and get to decide that you want to do something for God. I'm thankful. Um, BBS, I'm going to say this. BBS, I, I may have to get a club to beat it out of some of them, so I may need this. No, I'm joking. BBS, um, Brother Nick, Chris, yeah, y'all came in the third uh, uh, BBS two years ago, three, four, four years. They came into the adult class that I teach. Been here ever since. Thank you. They didn't just come in with this. They got them ahead on it. What a blessing. I, uh, I know, Brother Josh, I know y'all was here last, was that last year at VBS? Y'all been? So this year, it'd be one year this year at VBS that you guys came in and sat through the adult class, and here they are. Part of the church. She's teaching this year, ain't you? Amen. Ain't that a blessing from God? Woo, they walked in and said, you know what? They, these people walking around with these don't look very impressive said, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That feels good right there. You know what they did? That's, that's what VBS does. It, 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 and these kids that's been saved in VBS, the people's lives that's been changed. But I'm telling you, it ain't just for kids. We've had families, uh, I can't even think of all of them right now, but there was family, there's other families in here that came and showed up in VBS, and they're still here. What a blessing. Ain't that a blessing from God? And, and, and so your labor, your labor, your work, for VBS is not in vain. I don't care if we gain one family a year. It's worth thousands of dollars and, and hours of sweat for one family. That's how important your family is to us. That's how important you are to us. And we're glad you're here today. But you, we, if we ain't got no longing, we'll never get our eggs back. Ain't you tired of carrying a handle around, beating around? Your family's going through hell and all you do is whack around and whack around. Can't get no result. I can't feel God. Where's God at? Pow, pow, pow. Where's God at? I don't know where God's at anymore. God's the same place that you left Him. When you, when you walked away from, when, you're, when you lost this, what you did was you left it laying. And it's still in the same place you left it. And you walked away and thought you, 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 uh, you let a job take you out of church. You let, uh, 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 like I said, a divorce, marital problems, financial problems. Something took you out and you lost your edge. And now you're walking around this and you have beat and banged. You're wondering how you're going to get through the next day. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm telling you right now, when I run in to uh, physical problems, when I end up in the ICU with, with a family, with my mom last year, when I end up in places like that, I hurt just like you do. But you know what? I'm going to go into this right here. And I'm, I'm going to do some cutting, amen. When I say, God, I need you to take my mom because her brain's got cancer and she's just laying there. God, you take her home with you. I guarantee you God knew that I had this right here. And he said, I'm going to listen to your prayer and I'm going to bless that thing. You can say what you want to say, but I don't want to go into a chopping contest and not have a chopper, amen. Come on, preacher. That's... That's the difference between churches uh, that's just a building and a group of people that meet for a donut and a smile and a coffee and a little music. But I'm telling you right now, Brother Jody, if we're going to hit this thing head on, we're going to need some of you to get your edge back. But you've got to long for it before you get it. My goodness, what's the difference in right now and when you used to be faithful and you used to teach a class and used to serve God and you sang in a choir. Now we can't even get three people to stand up here in a choir. What an embarrassment. What an embarrassment. I'll tell the whole world wide well, baby. Man. I've done everything I can do. I can't make Sunday school class successful. I don't teach a class. I can't make the choir successful because I don't lead a choir and I don't do uh, none of that stuff. 
You know what it's going to take is somebody to have a longing to get back what they've lost and get their butt up and do something for the glory of God. Amen. You got to realize he realized he couldn't get no results without that edge. Some just stop and watch everybody else do it. And then they go, I don't know why he chopped that right there. Did y'all hear about that? Yeah, he, he's, I don't know why he's chopping. That ain't how you do it. Here you go, big boy. Get on it. Anytime you want to take an axe away from me or split them all, you're welcome. If you know how to do it better than I do, get after it. But at the end of the day, when you get done, you need a bunch of chips and a tree falling, or you need some logs that's been split. And I don't care how old you are, how young you are, or nothing about you. You should get busy chopping. Amen. I want to be, when Jesus comes back, I want to be standing in a, in a pile of chips. Holding this. Hands with blisters. Sweat on my brow. And say, God, I sure tried. I don't know. I, I, I couldn't make them want to stay. I don't know. It, it, the preaching, I guess, not that good or, or whatever. I don't know, God. I've tried to feed them the Word of God. We've stood on your Word. We've stood on, and God said, listen, don't, you know what you do? You take care of yourself. And you let everybody else worry about their own chips. Come on. Come on. I, I, I can't do it for you. You better make up your mind you're going, you're going to split some wood, amen. I'm nearly done. I'm not going to sit around and watch others do it, though. I, I, can't, I can't stand that. That drives me crazy. Sit around and talk about everybody's churches, what they're doing. I, I'm only pastor one best I can. It's right here. I'm not on Facebook. I don't know what's going on. You say, well, did you hear about what? No, I didn't hear about Because I don't want to hear about it. I want to hear about what's happening here. But the last thing I saw was, first thing we saw, of course, was the labor. And that was a, the work he put into it. And we saw the loss. He lost his edge. Amen. But we saw the longing. He wanted it back. Yeah. Some of y'all today, right there, the devil. I felt the devil just try to suppress you and say, don't let him talk yeah. you into being more faithful. That's all he wants is yeah. numbers and people to come back. Right. You're right, it is. Yeah. I'd not yeah. rather there be somebody on every pew in this building this morning. Because yeah. they'd be hearing the word of God. They have a chance to get back to, to, to uh, chipping some wood, amen. amen? But the last thing was the loyalty. And amen. God help us, man. There's such a lack of that today. Amen. Therefore said he, take it up thee. He put it in his hand and took it. You know what? There's a lot of them that just don't want it back. There's no loyalty. I, I ain't being loyal to me, but my goodness gracious, you should be loyal to your, to, to your God first. You should be loyal to the one that purchased the church, which is God. And if it's that important, he purchased it with his blood. I'd say you need to be loyal to the church. But you, but you need to be loyal uh, to your pastor and to your uh, choir director and everybody. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Amen. Get busy splitting. And get it back and get to work. Do you realize it takes something supernatural for what I've just talked about to happen? Um, anybody in here ever felt like you lost your edge and... Uh, I, I, I know that Brother Shannon, when he had pastored and he was between churches and he was in that straight betwixt the two, and I think he really just felt like he lost his edge. He, did, he really didn't. Can I say that? He really just, um, I ran across him one day at Dairy Queen and um, Sister Megan had stopped me and said, would you talk to Brother Shannon sometime? I said, I'd love to. Well, I just walked in Dairy Queen there he sat with all his friends by himself, amen. And so I said, hey, I'm with all my friends. Let's sit together. So we sit together. And God worked out that. And we sat down and talked about a lot of things I won't talk about. Amen. But he felt, like he, had, he felt like he was in a, in a between. He, he felt like he had lost his edge. Right. Right. And I tried to encourage him and said, listen. And, and, and I, this is all I will say without any details. But I said, listen, you're in a place right now you need to take care of your family. Get everything in order with your family. And get stop, catch your breath, and then say, God, I want my edge back. And I want to get to work somewhere. Amen. Little did we know it was here, but God was setting that up. God took care of that. But right here is so precious. You can walk out of here today at this right here, but you can walk out with both. And when you put them together, what a machine. And God will pick you up. But did you know, did you know if I dropped this in that baptistry, baptistry is full of water. If I went and dropped this in there, you all know what happened according to science. I, I, that's all I can say. You know what happened? It'll hit the bottom. I mean, just as fast. It'll just, boom, hit the bottom. So do you think I could put that in the baptistry up there? And take a stick and stir in the water and that thing will float. Who said that? You did? I, I'm, I appreciate you having faith in me. 
thank you because you're the only honest one in here because, no, it wouldn't because I don't have that much faith. I really don't. You're honest, and that's exactly right. No, I couldn't. God could, though. God could make it float. So you know what that made that when that floated, that, when that, when that, when that uh, uh, axe head floated, you know what that was? Supernatural. That was against science. That was against knowledge and wisdom. That was against any. That was against everything in the world. Even the law of gravity didn't have control over that. Amen. So for you to get your spiritual gift back, it's going to take something supernatural. Amen. I can't do it. I preach the word of God, but I, I'm telling you, I, we're fixing to put it in God's hands, and you can you can do what you want to do with it. You can walk out and say, "I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it." Or you say, "Listen, we we've we've lost. Be honest with your spouse and family and say, we're not where we used to be.'" And I want to get back there. I got a longing for it, but the loyalty is to the to, to God Almighty. Get it back and get to work. You know, when they got it back, oh, let me say this. I'm, I am done. It's two minutes after twelve. You're all right. I know you didn't look at your watch. But when you get it back, see this old edge here. It's probably going to need sharpen. It's going to need you to love it. See, when you love something enough, you can tell when somebody's looking for something that they really love. Um, I lost Cray and Casey, or Cray or Casey, one of them, in a store one time. Oh, dear Lord, I was throwing clothes in them racks and everything else hunting for them because all she told me to do was watch them just for a minute. And I thought, I messed up in one minute. And I mean, I was panicking. Have you ever lost something that was so special to you? Boy, you, you can tell somebody's looking for something that they love a whole lot. Well, when you find it back and say, I know you're rusty. I know my prayer life's rusty. I, I, know, my, I know my joy is rusty. I know my compassion's rusty. I know my, my long suffering's rusty. My love. I know that, I know I've been, you've been, I, I just left you laying there and you're rusty and it's going to need sharpened and it's going to need to be reattached just like I did earlier. It's going to need somebody that can put it all together that's supernatural. Because none of this has been natural so far. But he said supernaturally, something's, or somebody's going to put that thing back together. And when they do, they're going to beat that thing on there. And they're going to love it enough to make sure that it's on there tight. And when it gets loose, you're going to say, I've got to stop that or I'm fixing to lose my edge. It's a supernatural thing. It takes a, an almighty God to do, to do what's got to happen in here today. I can't do it. This church can't do it for you. Visitors, this church can't. We can't do what I'm preaching right now. It's going to take a supernatural power of God. But if you'll ask him, he will. There, I, I've got some parts of, uh, I've got some of my edge, amen, that I want to get back. I don't know what y'all want to do today, but that's what I want to do with it. So I wanted that message. I wanted you to hear the same message I needed to hear today. Let's all get busy because we're not doing anything with this right here. Let's stand.